Hi guys, my name is Steve Cordy. Uh, this lesson is going to be on the topic of uh, poker stats. How to use poker, uh, how to use statistics in your game to assess where you are, assess where you need to work on, and a bit about how to assess your opponents according to their stats. Um, so the reason for this video is uh, the guys at More EV contacted me in in relation to a post that's been made on the More EV forum. Um, this more EV members posted is uh, he's done a like a database review and posted his results looking uh, but it's clearly a bit confused as to what each of the stats mean and what sort of numbers he should be trying to get uh, in his game and, and trying to identify uh, possible weaknesses in his game so he can improve so um it's great that uh, people are doing this and uh, want to improve, but obviously it's quite frustrating uh, for people if they don't know what the stats mean. They can all uh, get a bit sort of uh, frustrating and overwhelming. So hopefully in this video I'll try and uh, go through some of the stats, explain what they mean, explain what sort of uh, stats would be reasonable in someone's game and why. And uh, Hopefully that'll help make sense of, of your own database reviews and of some of the other content that you see in training videos, etc. Um, so I'll go through each of them, but uh, you know something that jumps out straight away is that uh, this database review is not being done on very many hands. I can see that from some of the stats that take a long time to converge. Um, a couple of hundred hands or so, but you know, different stats converge different uh, frequencies. So, for example, two of the most commonly used stats, VPIP and PFR. You know, I can see enough from those numbers to to sort of glean something about this player's game, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So just a brief bit about using stats then. So obviously they can be used to assess your own game. Uh, they can also be used to get reads on your opponents. Uh, you can sort of set targets uh, to help you work on new concepts in your game. So for example, if you're working on three bet bluffing more often, you could, uh, you, you, first of all, you'd want to know what your current three bet bluff, uh, three bet percentage was. Let's say it's 5%. If you wanted to do it more often, you might want to increase to eight. So you can set sort of set benchmarks and monitor your progress. Um, and as I touched on there, obviously sample size is very important. So obviously the bigger sample size, the better. But if you're not playing that many hands or that often, then you don't want to wait three years to get a, a sample of hands. So um, you know you can uh, use smaller samples, but you just need to be aware of how how different stats. Uh, Need need different numbers of hands to converge into a meaningful number. So, for example, twenty to thirty hands might be enough to make a loose judgment of v, VPIP, um, which is the frequency of hands that you play in overall. Um, but for because that because that scenario occurs in every hand, in every hand you dealt, you get a choice whether to play it or not. So each of those 30 hands has been an opportunity to either fold, call, or raise. But for a river check raise, for example, you need to arrive at the river and face a bet, having checked yourself. So that circumstance arises much less often, and you might need more hands, let's say 5,000, to make a reasonable um, assessment of it. Obviously, at the extremes, though, you need less evidence. So, for example, if someone's check raised five times out of five, you know, they might have only needed 500 hands to get that five, and you could probably say that if they've done it five times out of five, they like to check raise on the river, even though you wouldn't be doing so with absolute certainty. Um, so, you know, you could make uh, some some approximation to say this person likes to check raise a lot, but you wouldn't be able to distinguish between someone who check raises 10 and 25% based on only five opportunities, obviously. So getting into the to the definition of the stats themselves, then so VPIP is uh, voluntarily 
put money in the pot. The percentage of times you voluntarily put money in the pot. So effectively is the percentage of hands you choose to play. So not ignoring the the blinds that you've been forced to post. Um, so if your VPIP is 20, then that means you're playing 20% of hands. So as an approximation, we're going to bring over this poker stove and see what 20% of hands looks like. You know, you play in those sort of hands. Obviously, as an approximation, maybe you play all your small pairs and you don't play these hands here. So, you know, it's a bit of an approximation. Um, just one thing to bear in mind is, you know, like, uh, you should be adjusting your percentage of hands that you're playing according to your position. So, and when you're under the gun, you've got, uh, in a six max game, you've got three people behind you who can call you and put you out of position post flop. So, um, under the gun is not the best position, is the worst position at the table for that. Um, so you want to be maybe tightening your range up a little, getting it down from say 20 to something like 15 or so. Um, whereas on the button, where everybody's folded to you and you're guaranteed position for the rest of the hand, you could play a lot wider to exploit that positional advantage. So you can adjust your game, you can adjust your VPIP, percentage of hands you play, according to the position that you're in at the table. So as I said, it reflects the percentage of hands you play for a call or raise. And you want to vary according to your position and, and your opponent's position. So a reasonable range of numbers, I'd say, would be 15 to 30. Um, so I'd say 15 is being quite tight and 30 is being quite loose. Often you'll see people up and over 30, you know, maybe over 40. Um, and I'd, I'd use 40 as a category for someone who's being exceptionally loose and is generally going to be a weak player. So pre-flop raise is another important stat. You know, these are probably the most two important stats to get a, a rough feel of someone's game. Um, is the percentage of times which you pr you you raise. Just similar to VPIP, is the percentage of hands you're playing, but this is a only considering the ones with which you've raised. So uh, the numbers uh, typically going to see, you know, are going to be of the same proportion of as a VIP, VIP. I'd say 15 would be tight, 30 would be loose. So what what we really want is a tight gap between our VPIP and, our, and PFR. So we want to be playing a large proportion of our hands as the aggressor. You know, when you generally in, in poker, when you're aggressor, you probably hear the phrase, you know, there's two ways to win the pot. Either you have the best hand or you get a fold. Um, if, if there's a large gap between your VPIP and PFR, it means that in lots of occurrences, you're not the aggressor. And you only have one way in which to win the pot. So if I drag over the forum post to this user as a VPIP, which is a, in the reasonable range that I, I've suggested, but his PFR you know, is very low and in a couple of hundred hands that's still going to pretty much converge. Like, you know, I can say with certainty that his, P his PFR over 10,000 hands is not going to have increased to uh, a more reasonable number like 18. So um, the immediate thing I'd suggest for this user to work on, he, he, he's got a reasonable sense of starting hands as I can see from his VPIP but he's clearly not raising with those enough so either he's just limping in too often pre-flop you know I'd suggest that like um, basically to never limp in if you're gonna play a hand play it with aggression play it as if it's, as if it's pocket aces um, play it as if it's strong because you've got those two ways to win the pot. Uh, so just to just to just to emphasise then, so I'd suggest a PFR of something in the region of seventeen to twenty.